Hello and welcome to a town called Bastard. This is him, Neil, and I am playing Crusader Kings 2. Uh, we're engaged in the Carling Restoration with the attempt to restore the Carling Dynasty to a crown in Western Europe, um, which looks to be Castile at this rate because I am um, married to the Queen of Castile, Queen Gontrode of the Lionheart, and uh, my son, who I've already given, my wife has already given birth to, not me, um, will be heir, will be the King of Castile and Leon, and the Duke of Anjou Berry and Leon. Um, it's an interesting thing that uh, the uh, she that she's called the Lionheart, which is obviously a title we know of from um, King uh, King Richard. And she's got this brilliant strategist um, trait, which means she's a battle commander. At the moment, I don't believe that she can actually lead armies. Um, the only way to lead armies in the game at the moment is you have to be eligible to be a marshal only be eligible to be a marshal under certain um, uh, certain religions like Catharism or if you're Basque culture um, or if you're on cognatic um, i.e. gender neutral succession. Uh, in the next patch uh, w women will, who are rulers will generally be allowed to rule armies um, but at the moment they can't. So she's um, the Lionheart even though she can't actually command the troops. However the state marshal that she gets from this still allows her to raise a lot of troops so if I look at her troops here it doesn't say. Uh, maybe it's saying garrison size? No. Well, it, if I could see it, it would show that she gets a lot more troops um, because of her high marshal. Um, see if I can demonstrate my own holding here. Um, there we go. Owner marshal skill plus 50%. That's me uh, with 20. So owner marshal skill plus 20% plus 50%, which makes quite a lot of difference, really. And I have now become a... Um, skill tactician. Um, as you can see my education trait, this, I'm going from a two pip version to a three pip version which is much better. This can only really happen with um, military. Uh, none of the other education traits can go up in this manner. But it's a great thing to happen. Um, more martial, more stats, yay. So I, as I had 50% before it's now gone up to 65% so it's 5% extra troops for my, each of my holdings um, per martial. Sadly I only have one holding so and it's just happened again. I've never actually had it happen this much. Um, I have um, only ever had it happen once to one character. It's just happened twice in a minute. Fantastic. Um, oh, wonderful. If only I had more land. Speaking of which, can I get better chancellors or anything? Or slightly better? You can um, probably just send. Um, doing a uh, terribly good job just placing my quarters with better ones. Well, um, so I could have a lot of troops right now, except that I don't have any land. Um, so I, again, the penalty with Gavelkind is I now have three brothers who have counties. Um, one of my brothers has more counties than I have. Um, he's not a duke. So. Mm. And France does seem to be losing this war with the Kaiser once more. Again, the Kaiser with his ludicrous amount of troops. Um, well, what I mainly have to hope for now is that um, it's going to be my sister has a strong claim on uh, Anjou, which she can use even against a male, um, which seems weird. I can't imagine why um, a woman's claim um, at this point would ever be successful against a man, um, but that's not my um, call to make. So um, we just have to make sure that France has become so weakened that England won't press a claim in it. Or that any other people that I've married my wives or sisters off to. Who have I married my sisters off to? Well, that's the Queen of England. Um, the Duchess of Vaughan. Um, it's an annoying thing in particular because, it's, in this case for instance, let's say that um, the King of England declared war on France. He wouldn't, he'd be declaring war for my land, which, um, and, I, and we're allies, I think. I think I'm an ally with the uh, King of England. Yes, so he couldn't declare, um, well he could, but the AI never would declare war on me because I'm the ally. But will declare war on France for my land? It's a bit of a uh, odd way of doing it. Um, I wonder if I can start a fraction. If I was to start a fraction, faction, could I press immediately? I could actually press a demand and um, try and become King of France 
in one go I could demand that France became elective, I think. Um, well, that would be an interesting way of uh, ending the series. Um, I might try at some point, uh, going back to the save game and doing an alternate history version of the King of France. Um, see how that goes. Mm. Well, and he's still imprisoned. Good old King Philippe. Good, good King Philippe. Yes, I hope my um, how many troops can I raise these days? Actually, if I if I needed to go to war with someone, Just regardless of whatever my character screen says, the actual amount of troops I have right now is you know, three thousand, which isn't many. Um, I could probably defeat Brittany. No, I couldn't even defeat Brittany. Um, pity that fabrication years and years ago in the previous lifetime didn't work against them. I could have had a nice duchy here as extra troops. Um, instead, whilst I am quite a powerful duke, I'm not very powerful. I mean, Burgundy, left on Aquitaine and Toulouse are still enormously powerful. Um, who can I educate my daughter? I can educate my daughter. Yes, go for it. Um, wonderful. This kind of um, heavy interaction between um, England, France, and Germany did kind of happen. I don't think there are quite this wars by the entire empire against um, areas of France. Um, I'm, it's, I think, again, it's a bit of an abstraction. I know I say that a lot. Um, that you can only um, declare war top level liege to top level liege. Um, it's necessary in order to allow the lieges to come in and help them in some respects. But it would be quite nice if there's a way for um, border skirmishes, so let's say the Duke of Luxembourg to declare war a bit of the Mondois. Um, as long as it was a type of war that didn't change the ownership. So as I was saying earlier about the possibility that you could be the Duke of Nor you could be the King of England and the Duke of Normandy, but be a vassal to France with respect to Normandy. It'd be nice if, say, the Duke of Luxembourg could declare war with the Duke of Champagne to become the Duke of Champagne, as long as the Duke of Champagne remained um, in the service of France. And that would make for quite an interesting way of doing it, because you'd have quite a lot of infighting amongst the lesser vassals, which would also keep them busy, and also give you something to strive for. Because the moment there's, um, when the Crown Authority reaches medium, which we're a long way from doing in France, medium Crown Authority, you cannot fight other vassals in, in the same realm as you. Um, which is very useful as a top liege, because it means you can prevent your vassals from accumulating power, unless they inherit. But it does kind of limit your actions as a vassal. But if you could declare war with people outside of your kingdom, um, who, um, whose land you had claims on. That would be very interesting. Um, as you can do that at the moment, of course, but obviously, but I, let's say there's medium crown authority in France, I couldn't declare war on the Holy Roman Empire just for the county of Hainan, for instance. Hannah's playing daring games. She could become brave or honest or humble. I would normally go for brave, but I don't intend her to have um, uh, vassals, so the brave doesn't really matter for that. So I'm going to go for this one, just to make sure she doesn't die, so I can still marry her after someone. Again, it teaches you a very hideous way of treating your children, because your first son, and maybe your second son you want to be good, your other sons you want to be good, but not so good that they'll challenge you, your heir, and then your daughters you just want to marry them off somewhere. Um, no idea who you can even marry. You can, you can marry a baroness. Yes, that's what you can do. Um, and then I'll educate you by myself. So, let's say for the argument you could um, own land and declare war on people in other kingdoms without moving it. It would also be very interesting because you could be could have very different kind of pulls towards people, as you could hate them for being your liege, or and then um, love them for um, your liege in respect to another piece of land, perhaps. Uh, which would be very interesting. Um, and I think it would add quite a bit of nice dynamism to some of these bits. Um, but there's not like that at the moment. And it would be very complicated. Trying to just visualise it would be messy. And here I have to be quite careful with my retinue. As this Angevin army in Anjou. Yeah, you can be ambitious. Fine. Um, as there's very few, there's only a few troops here. And the Kaiser's armies are just marching back and forth all over the place. 
Just make sure that um, I don't get caught in some kind of crossfire. But the AI just seems to be moving in up and down a bit. Um, the AI has got stuck in a bit of a loop here because these French troops keep moving and then stopping still, and these move and those stand still. It doesn't really matter because the Kaiser is still going to win um, the war for Bruges, but you know, it's, it's, it's possible something might have won at some point. Um, but it is not to be today. So this war will steadily come to a close. I'm just going to up the speed up a bit whilst we uh, see what happens. Um, and I could up my centralization even further if I really wanted, but I've got plenty of land. Uh, one, so I have no danger of leaving anymore. Um, my league is still imprisoned. There's still an anti-pope. Um, Kaiser is still at war. As you can see, I'm at war with these um, little armies here. That's because they are vassals armies of um, my opponent. So even though I'm not actually at war with those states, their troops are still hostile, which allows vassals to help their, their uh, lords. So, for instance, let's say someone declared war on f France for the Duchy of Anjou, I could defend it. Um, and I get basically no credit for it, which is a bit of a shame, which would be nice if there's a way of doing it. But um, it gives as a way as a player to defend, defend things. The AI never does, there's also a bit of a shame. It would be nice if, um, if say, the Count of, Count of Flanders actually raised his own troops right now in defence of his own territory, but he does not. Meanwhile, Champagne is doing something, trying to revoke Reigns, uh, Prince Bishopric. Don't know why, it won't do much good. Ah, and I can now get another a kind of combat trait. Um, I'm going to learn to inspire, as I quite like that. I don't know where I am, but where I am, I'm in Amiens. I'm not actually leading armies, but I quite like this one, because inspiring leader means that you gain benefits when you're in the middle. You gain benefits to morale, and just generally benefits when you're in the centre. Aggressive leader is good, but it can reduce your defence. Um, likewise, defender reduces your damage. And fainting gives your defence. I like Inspire because it's not quite as good as the ones, but um, gives you a lot of bonuses. And especially as I am the kind of character I am, I'm um, a brilliant strategist now. I'm also, excuse me, I always have the war focus. Um, and I'm also a strategist, in addition to being a brilliant strategist. So I'm likely to lead from the, from the middle, which is where the Inspire leader will come from. And now I have factions. Dangerous factions who want seniority in Anjou for my brother. From my um, homosexual brother, apparently. My elusive shadow sedu seducer brother. Yeah. He is. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and um, discourage him from joining factions. He doesn't like me very much being ambitious and having claims on my land. Um, yeah, I, I can't get him excommunicated. Ooh. I have um, gained prestige for my fighting. Won't do us any good. Um, my brother. Well, I'm tempted to make him spy master to try and make him like me. He wants to become spy master. He now likes me a bit more. Give him some gold if he likes me a bit more still. And then I'll make a match to the hunt. And uh, designated regent, why not? If he's going to kill me with that intrigue level, he already could. Let's face it. So I need to make him like me. Um, and he's still in the faction, but he doesn't like me quite enough. But um, I need him kind of on my side. I can't. I don't think I can get him to stop joining factions now, unfortunately. That is my spy master, but I'll um, take what I can get. I don't think he'll help me revoke the county of doors. Oh well, um, um, where can I put him? Anywhere useful I can take stuff. Ooh, I can marry my son to the Duke of Burgundy. Well, the Duke of Burgundy's daughter. Let's do that. And then I'll try to murder, his, murder him. That seems like a perfectly sensible and reasonable thing. I prefer a match than your marriage. Shame. My wound is healed, which is good, because they reduced my health. And I've got a scar. Slight prestige. Excellent. Or who? Since I can't marry the daughter, 
I'm going to have to wait until he has a son. And then murder the son. Um, yeah, let's see how that goes. And my mother has... Oh! And the fortuitous, she died just as I started speaking. So I have gained the county of Amiens. I finally gained another province again. Wonderful. Gained lots of troops. That actually will increase my troops quite significantly. At least another thousand troops will gain from that. Wonderful. Um, take what I can get. Yes, this preferred matrilineal marriage thing, it didn't really happen in the, the ways they're talking about, so... Um, it would be nice if um, I could just let me marry the son. Well, I have to hope, as I said, that he has a son, then get the betrothal, and then assassinate the son. Um, oh, and I'm raising it that lot. Excellent. We've started winning this war, again. Um, Troops have been raised. Um, Scotland has finally arrived on the mainland, I think. Um, so we might actually have a bit of a chance. I should really be lead leading the charge in the middle of the stack, personally, I think, as an inspiring leader and a brilliant strategist and strategist. Oh, and yet another thing I can do. Well, I can either focus on the flank, which increases my ability when flanking, but reduces my lead in the centre. Don't think I'll do that. Or I can master flat terrain. And I'm going to do that because, again, it has no drawbacks, unlike the flanker. And there's also quite a lot of flat terrain. All of this is flat. So if um, my stupid king, I mean my wise and noble imprisoned king, um, puts me in charge of, an, of the army, I'm going to give quite large bonuses to all the troops. And apparently I'm going to become Roth now. That kind of makes sense. I can see that happening. Um... I'm already warding two children, so I'm going to get one of them warded by someone else. Okay. So I'm going to have to educate my son personally. He should become a noble, brilliant strategist. So I'm becoming Roth. And there's still no one useful I can marry my son to. Ooh. Well, I, that can't possibly um, be anything, you know, health-related. It must be a sign from God. That's absolutely how it works. Uh, well, the Duke of Burgundy might die himself anyway. He's ill and wounded. And his wife is ill and has lover's pox and is an adulteress. Well, that's going well for him. Ah. Uh, and another succession. Uh, another faction thing. I see any other succession for my brother is still going strong. Okay. What I'm going to do get my um, brother who likes me to scheme on the other brother to try and get him to stop being part of factions. He might do some good. Um, I wonder. I can make Charles like me more by getting to educate my daughter. Um, this has got a hostage now, so maybe... I think you need to get this to 80 before they leave factions. Um, and 60 before they... Um, won't join any on the road. So he's getting close. But, but he, has, he has just dropped his own faction. So that's nice. Um, he's still supporting his brother. But um, hopefully the scheme will go out of that. It's hard work, you know, being a um, feudal ruler, having all my brothers take stuff off me. And apparently my dear mother was building barracks here. So I'll start getting more troops. That's that wonderful. This can hold uh, 1.7 thousand troops. And, uh, ooh, and you're far more than. Fine. So the taxes. Still a pity I can't have a better. Wow. Okay, that is a better counsellor. I'm going to send him to fabricate in uh, Brittany. That's a good, good man. He's a charismatic negotiator, a genius, ambitious, diligent, kind. He's also a lunatic. Stark raving mad. Um, oh, I don't want my son to become craven. Craven is terrible. So, he's not going to come brave, at least he's not um, craven. Yes, oh god, that's that Chancellor. Impressive man. Um, that's the benefit of being a genius and ambitious. Is he diligent and diligent? Wow, that could be that's um, plus eight to all stats. Just those ones. Also a lunatic. But I don't mind. Um, oh, and I'll finally become a marshal. 
which is in theory, if Willy stops putting me to work in battle, it's actually safer. Um, yeah, why not? Let's have a doctor. As I was saying earlier about the king of becoming kingdom of France, um, a pagan, if he takes that ambition, can subjugate others. Um, I'm not pagan, I'm not trying to become king of France right now, so let's just try to have a doctor. But in theory, when he stops me um, leading troops, I will um, be a bit safer. This uh, symbol here means that I'm leading troops, by the way, that uh, sword and shield. I find one of my people, that, that means they're doing a job somewhere. Um, my king, my previous king, had the imprisoned icon there, which means he was imprisoned. And the other item I have here is um, going to the barber. This is um, from the customization, customization DLC, allows me to cut my beard and change my hairstyle. Just a little thing. I don't really use it that much. Um, and I can obviously only do it myself. There's also an option, if I was the top liege of my house, I could also customise my house, which would change my coat of arms. Um, I'd generally only do that if I was using one with randomly generated coats of arms, or if I changed religion and it didn't suit. Um, most of the time. I mean, this is quite a nice one. Um, completely, arguably completely his ahistorical, but uh, that's not too, too bad. Um, but it, when I say it's ahistorical, there were lots of people, even during this period, who attributed those kind of arms. Because the eagle of the Holy Roman Empire did attributed sort of backwards to the carvings, often impaled with the fleur de lis of France. Uh, they're still going for it. Um, yes. I kind of have to hope, though, for this gambit now, that the Countess of Suffolk has a son and then dies. Sorry, and then dies after the Count of um, Commandois. Does he see? Again, when I was talking about um, being able to have multiple lords for each of your fiefdoms, if um, you inherit land from externally, if it is of the same rank or lower, you incorporate it into your realm. If it's higher, then you become incorporated into their realm. So if um, Baldwin and Elisande have a son, and he dies, he becomes a Count. And when she dies, he inherits her county that stays within France. On the other hand, if she dies first, then her son will become a Count of, Count of Suffolk, and then he will then keep the Mandois within England that's inherited. So it's um, important to keep things uh, central, uh, to keep things as close as possible, make sure they're down in the right order, it gets tricky. Um, less important for me in some respects um, it could be. Although I'd like for Mandwa to stay within my duchy. Now, this is even a liberation revolt. Um, because it's not de jour territory and it's different culture, there's this revolt that's happened here. But all of Aquitaine is revolting against it. It's a lot of peasants. It's um, badly timed for France, who's trying to fight off the Holy Roman Empire. Um, and again, the whilst every, this, these are rebels, so everyone is um, opposed to them, not just um, us. But again, the Duke of Aquitaine won't actually lift a finger to do anything about them. Um, seems a bit silly. But my wife has a daughter. My wife is an architect. Not content with being a Lionheart, she's also um, quite studying stewardship. Good for her. Now, I think I should help him along and hopefully become gregarious. Gregarious is another great trait. Diplomatic, attraction, vassals like me. Yeah, he's honest. Yeah, he'll do. If we're a bad spy master. But diplomacy is good. Diplomacy didn't really matter earlier in the game. Now it matters a lot more because my vassals like me more based on my diplomacy. So, this count likes me. I'm 15 for my personal diplomacy, which is uh, amazing. Um, ooh, King of Scotland is losing his troops to the Aquitanian Revolt. That's nice. Um, I am vaguely tempted at this point to go and help um, keep Bruges. In fact, I am going to do that, um, as it is in my interests for um, France as a whole to be quite strong. Um, any more troops I can raise? Nope. Um, as I want, as uh, it's sort of easier to fend off other opposition because. It's only a matter of time after they take Flanders, they might start looking at my lands as well. Um, so I'm going to move my troops and take those uh, the Kaiser's troops over there. 
Well, I'm being threatened to stay out of all factions. But I'm going to do that anyway, so that's not much of a problem. Fortunately, I'm still... I'm, um, I'm in Paris to train troops. What I might actually do is I don't want to be in Paris to train troops. I want to lead this army. So I'm going to resign from being Marshal. This means I stop training troops. And, uh, I'm going to disband some of my armies. Okay. And I'm going to disband this leaves levy. This can be disbanded. And this means that if I can figure out where they were raised in the first place, I should. I think I have to lower Andrew's troops. I'm just going to lower everything just to, to show. I'll raise all my troops here, and I'm now leading this army. Um, that's quite useful because it means um, if they're now being marched on. That is now quite useful though, because it means I can lead the army and fight off the Kaiser myself with my high martial skill. And I had a second son, sadly, which means that he'll be king of Leon and Berry and Duke of Leon. Split the land, something fierce. But he is a sickly child, so hopefully he'll die. I mean, um, I didn't, didn't mean anything of the sort. No, no. Yes, yeah, so I've got lots of people here who have to die in the right order now, don't I? Yeah, yeah I did not take Gavelkind into account when I was marrying these people off. Interesting. Don't give him the marshal, I want to leave my troops. Okay. Point multiple people to be the end of this fight, but that just seems a bit like gaming, even for me. Um, so I'm going to make sure I'm leaving the, the central bank. Uh, can I see the modifier? Just there we go. Um, as long as I'm fighting these areas, I get quite good bonuses here because I'm leaving the centre. And um, my movement speed in turn is affected by who leads. So the movement speed I can't actually see there. If I look on my wife. She has organiser though, so my wife has the organiser trait, not that she can use it, but she can't lead armies. This means that the speed of her armies has increased, um, and the marshal increased that as well. Ooh, I can um, boost that faction. Let's go for that. That's polite. I'm going to march on Bruges and try and kill the Kaiser troops. It's flat lands. Um, I'm a much better general, I have much more troops, so I should be okay. Oh, and he's playing all the way over that way. Might even go and help in the Aquitanian revolt this, once this war is over because I um, don't want them to leave. Where's my second son? My second son is still sick. Right, I'm just going to head over to the Aquitanian revolt as this war looks like it should be all but done. Since it's only another couple of weeks and then that war score of control in Bruges will tick up. I don't know what Hungary's been up to. Um, not seeing their troops around here. Not been much help. Yes, that, um, having that second son is a bit of a bit of a pain. I can't even plot to uh, assassinate him. I can imprison him. Everyone will hate me for it. But if I start getting old, I might do it to try and increase the likelihood that he dies. Oh, someone's trying to kill me. Um, well, um, I don't know who would be trying to kill me. I might imprison my second son, just to be on the safe side. My subjects will all hate me. Mm, this is risky. I'll leave it to the last possible moment, I think. 
Last possible moment before I do that. Ah, <sighs> the Holy Roman Empire has just gathered more troops. But the war is over. We must have won. Well, we have won. And so I think uh, that is the end of this episode. Thanks for that. Next episode I'll be trying to beat back this Aquitanian Liberation Revolt. Um, to try and keep France strong. Um, don't think I'll get any gratitude for it whatsoever. But never mind. And then I'll be continuing my adventures to try and uh, marry my son off to this um, daughter. I should have done it before this child died. Never mind. I'll set him as a special character so hopefully find out if he has any uh, more sons that free up the daughter. I will see you next time. Goodbye everyone.